Andrew Tate completed as a professional boxer for over 10 years but decided to retire in 2016 after winning four IKSA World Championship matches. He began training as a professional boxer when he was 15 years old, and by the time he was 25, he won his first IKSA Kickboxing World Championship match against his longtime rival Jean-Luc Benoit. Andrew Tate finished his kickboxing career with a record of 76 and 9, with 76 total victories and 9 total losses. He finished 23 of his fights by KO or knocking out his opponent in the ring. Tate started his kickboxing career in 2010 and quickly made a name for himself on the national and international scenes. Tate has competed in numerous organizations and weight classes including Glory, K1, and Enfusion. He has fought against some of the top names in the sport, such as Rico Verhoeven, Gokan Saki, and Nieke Holsken. One of Tate's most notable accomplishments was winning the Glory Welterweight Tournament in 2013. He defeated Karapet Karapetian, Karim Gaji, and Joseph Valtellini to claim the tournament title and a $100,000 prize. Tate's kickboxing nickname was King Cobra. He had several notable fights throughout his kickboxing career. Some of his biggest fights include Daniel Hughes On September 26, 2009, Andrew Tate faced off against a young fighter from Great Britain named Daniel Hughes in Bristol. The local IFK championship was at stake in the bout. As soon as the bell rang, Hughes charged forward while Tate took a defensive stance, using kicks to control the distance. The fighters spent some time sizing each other up before Tate increased the pressure and began striking Hughes' head from various angles, leading to a knockdown. When Hughes recovered, the fight continued, with Tate taking control and attacking more aggressively. This pattern repeated until Hughes was at the ropes, unable to defend himself and sat in the corner of the ring. Hughes then refused to continue, leading to Tate earning a first round TKO victory. Jamie Bates On December 16, 2010, Andrew Tate faced England's Jamie Bates in a match to determine the new full contact light heavyweight champion. Sadly, a complete record of the fight is not available online. However, a portion of the eighth round is present. In the clip, we can see both fighters showing signs of fatigue. As soon as the bell rang, Andrew advanced and began delivering quick kicks. Bates also tried to use his legs to his advantage. But when he tried to load up, Tate immediately used his hands to counter with swift combinations. In the first minute of the eighth round, Tate executed a precisely aimed high kick and secured an unconditional victory via knockout. Jean-Luc Benoit In March 2011, Tate suffered his third professional loss of his career. He faced Jean-Luc Benoit, a representative from France, in a fight for the vacant ISKA light heavyweight title. The first round was a feeling out process with both athletes using kicks to study each other. In the second round, Benoit made an illegal groin strike. In the third round, Tate took a more defensive approach and focused on counterattacks while Benoit increased the pressure and tried to land a headshot. The fourth round was similar with Tate working as the second number and Benoit trying to find weakness in his tactics. The fifth round saw Tate move to the center of the ring and respond to pressure with pressure. The fight continued in the same rhythm until the end, and in the end, Benoit won by split decision. But this would only set a rivalry for the years, as you'll see. Adnan Omerguij On August 17, 2011, Tate faced Adnan Omerguij, a representative from Bosnia and Herzegovina, and a promising new prospect in the finale of a full contact Grand Prix with a vacant belt on the line. Tate dominated the fight from the start, taking control of the ring and using fast kicks to control the distance. He expertly controlled the flow of the fight and landed precise shots when necessary. After a high kick connected, Omerguiz signaled he was done, and it was later revealed that he made the decision due to an eye injury. Tate earned another stoppage victory via TKO and became the full contact middleweight champion. He has a very good job when he uses it. Oh. A nice high kick there from the Cobra! Wobbles away. Wendell Roche In 2013, Andrew Tate earned five confident wins via decisions, including a win over French fighter Vincent Pathogen, whom he had lost to in November 2012. The year started off well for Tate in 2014 as he knocked out another French representative, Cyril Veta. 
in the first round of their fight in March. However, a month later he lost to Slovakian Miroslav Single by decision. In June, Tate added another knockout to his collection by defeating Hollander Wendell Roche in a fight on June 29th. Although the full tape of the fight is not available on the internet, it is known that Tate won in the second round. He employed the same tactics as before, actively using kicks, hands when needed, and confusing his opponent with a mix of techniques. He applied pressure and confidently moved towards the win. The volume of strikes exceeded Roche's limit, and he was unable to fight back, resulting in another dominant win via TKO for Tate. Liang Ling after a decisive win over Hollander, Andrew Tate entered the ring again in January 2015. At K1 China vs USA, he faced Liang Ling in the Infusions Grand Prix. With the championship under 19 kilos at stake, throughout three rounds Tate showed complete dominance, controlling the distance and dictating the pace of the fight. He attacked from various angles with combinations of strikes including kicks, and took every round scoring a decisive unanimous decision win and adding another trophy to his professional career. Jean-Luc Benoit In March of 2015, Andrew Tate faced Jean-Luc Benoit for the third time in their rivalry. They put on a show for seven rounds, giving everything they had in a highly intense and action-packed fight. Despite the tough competition, Andrew was relentless, utilizing his entire arsenal of skills, such as constant pressure, a high volume of kicks, and a strong will to win. He finally put the rivalry to rest with a decisive victory, and proved that he is a top-notch fighter even by today's standards. Even though he did return to do some fights after his official retirement in 2016, but these were some of the biggest and most notable fights of Andrew Tate's career, where he faced some of the top names in the sport and put on a great performance despite not winning all the fights. He has proven himself to be a skilled and determined fighter, who always put up a great show. Andrew Tate says he started competing in kickboxing rather than boxing or MMA because that was the only gym close to his home. Andrew would run for one to two hours to the gym, train with his coach, and then run another one to two hours back to his house afterward. He says the boxing gym was too far away for him to run, so he ended up training as a professional kickboxer instead. In addition to his kickboxing career, Tate is also known for his outspoken personality and controversial antics outside the ring. He has been involved in several public feuds with other fighters and promoters, and has gained a reputation as a trash talker and provocateur. Despite this, Tate continues to be a popular figure in the kickboxing world and remains one of the top-ranked welterweights in the sport. He has also dabbled in other combat sports such as boxing and MMA, but kickboxing remains his main focus. Why did Andrew Tate retire from kickboxing? Andrew Tate mostly fought as a kickboxer as he had bigger professional opportunities in this sport. However, he was a well-rounded athlete and could have easily competed in MMA if something like the UFC was around when he was competing. So, why did he stop competing? Andrew Tate retired from his professional kickboxing because he wanted to focus full-time on his growing webcam studio business. He saw an opportunity to get rich with his brother Tristan Tate and he went all in on scaling his company. I was a kickboxing world champion, but kickboxing isn't boxing. I'd make $100,000 per fight, but I didn't consider myself rich. That's actually the reason I retired. I woke up one day and realized I'm giving 6.5 hours to the fight game. I believed if I applied that same time and energy to making money, I would be a millionaire. I truly believed that. Of course, Andrew Tate had other reasons for retiring as well. He suffered from several eye injuries during his kickboxing career, forcing him to get invasive eye surgeries. He was concerned about the possibility of his eyes getting worse, so he decided to retire while he could still see properly. With that said, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you guys enjoyed it. Until next time.